Take your time. We, we do want to eventually get started, but people are coming in. And um, there's tables over here as well. We can always get more tables out if we need. So we do want to get going in the next couple of minutes. Okay, if you guys could grab your seats, we're going to try to get started. It's great to be together, isn't it? Shabbat Shalom. All right, well, let's, uh, it's, first of all, for those of you who are new and your first time, praise God. Thank you for coming. For those of you who keep coming back, thank you. Um, this is family when you're here. So, um, and we need each other right now, don't we? We really, really do. I'm, I'm going to turn this over to Julie. She's going to really um, start the evening. But um, if you've been coming for a long time, tonight's going to be a little bit different. Yes, we have potluck, which was prearranged. But um, I'm going to be spending a lot of time with just worship and praying for... Um, for Israel. Sorry. And... Um, uh, I'm just going to say, too, that um, this is one of those nights where I normally know what to say, and I just don't know what to say. And I don't want to say too much. I don't want to say too little. But um, it's really good to be together as we stand as one united for, for Israel, for our brothers and sisters in Messiah. And... Um, so tonight's going to be a time of uh, worship and prayer, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my lovely wife, Julie. I'm glad you're here because we're family. And I know that in other times of loss, the, the most important part is to really to be together and to spend time together. Sometimes there's tears and laughter and also more importantly it's a time to cling really tight to the Lord and so I hope tonight as we spend time together and we have dinner together and we pray together and we worship together that as we welcome in the Shabbat this Shabbat is not like the others that we've experienced and I know there's a lot of hurting people in the world so I hope that as we pray tonight, this will not just be going through the motions, which is a really, I think, human way to deal with being overwhelmed. But I pray tonight that as you are in this room and you worship the Lord, you do it with your whole heart, that when you pray and you intercede, it's with your whole heart because we can't afford to give it any less. So, with that, I'd like to read Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a well-proven help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, Though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy dwelling place of the Most High, God is in the midst of her, and she will not be moved. God will help her in the early dawn. The nations roar and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, see the works of the Lord, who makes desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts off the spear. He burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And with that, 
would like to welcome in Shabbat by lighting the candles. And on your table, we've put a memory candle, a memorial candle, and while I'm lighting the Shabbat candles, if one person from your table would like to light the candle in honor of those who've lost their lives, in memory of those that you've loved and lost before, please feel free to do that. And when I'm finished lighting the candles, we'll have a moment of silence just to reflect and posture our hearts. Okay. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us through faith in Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. Shabbat Shalom. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. We have some liturgy that we typically do, and we're going to continue with that. So. So this is um, Vishamru, which is a scripture-based prayer. You, you see it's based on Exodus 31, 16 to 17, Isaiah 66, 23. We're just going to just recite this together in English. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And I shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. The next blessing is a bracha Mashiach, which is the blessing of a Messiah. And um, we'll say it in Hebrew together, and then we'll say it in English. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alam. Asher Natan Lano et Derek, Ha Yeshua be Mashiach Yeshua, Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua, Amen. And next we have Audrey and Randy to lead us in the Shema and the Hafta. As we declare together Israel's faith in the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai. Forever 
you know, I'm sure we all think about all the families that are able to share in this liturgy tonight and the families that are unable to. But for those that are unable to, we will do it for them. This is the Via Hafta from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Via Hafta et Adonai Elohecha Bechal Levavcha Uvachal Nafshecha Uvachal Meodecha Fahayu Hadvarim Haele Asher Enochi Mitzavcha Hayom Alva Vecha in English. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. Vishinantam Livanecha, Videbarta Bam, Beshiftacha, Bevetecha, Uvlechtacha, Vaderech, Uvshachbacha, Uvkumecha. And you shall teach them diligently to your children. And speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. Ugshartam la ot ayadecha, the hayula tota fod bain enecha, uftav tam al mzuzo betecha, uvisha recha, the ahafta la recha kamocha. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I love you all. Amen. God is good because his word Last forever, amen. After generation after generation, I recited those blessings, and that will never end because God is eternal. So now we come to the time where we're going to have our kiddush, which is a blessing over the wine and the bread. Thank you. Had it out of order. My mind's everywhere. So please, with me in Hebrew and then in English. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolom borei pri hagafen amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. Now we have the blessing over the bread, the hamotzi, and we'll say it in Hebrew and then in English, please. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolom haomotzi lecha min haaretz. B'shem Yeshua, M'shenu Halachem Hachayim. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, the bread of life. Amen. Amen. You can please be seated, and then you're giving instructions for everyone, correct? Okay, so we're going to move into dinner. And so before we do, I just want to pray for the food and for our time together. And then when we return, I think Joel's going to give a message, a short message. So Lord, we thank you for this time together tonight. I thank you for bringing this family in this room that we could share a meal together, Lord. We pray for the families around the world. Like Audrey said, Lord, those who are not able to gather at the dinner table tonight, God, that we would just keep them in mind. We would not forsake this time together, Lord. I pray, Lord, that uh, you bless the hands of the, those who made these dishes that are here to be shared. And Lord, we just, we want to honor you and give you all the glory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Amen. All right, so please feel free to move through both sides of the table. Um, the utensils are on that end. You can move toward the desserts. Drinks are over here. And I think we'll have about, what, 30 minutes, yeah, 25 that's, to that's, 30 minutes. So you, you, you are off to the races. So yeah, he who gets there first. Yeah. 
Good job. <laughs> um, if anybody needs help getting through the line, let me know, and I will get you a dish. Okay. I just want to uh, please keep eating. This is where, take your time. I hope you guys are having a good time. I just want to personally say thank you for everybody who brought a dish. There's some delicious food here this evening. And thank you very much. And I hope you guys are getting a chance to, uh, yeah, meet one another and, and uh, make some new friends. I'm just curious, who came the farthest tonight? Who lives the farthest away from this location? Jonathan comes by bike. Woo! Awesome. Huh? We live in Lake Mary. That's not too, too far. Deepa, you live down by the airport, right? Oh, boy, that's a haul. Huh? St. Cloud. We have our St. Cloud gang and our St. Cloud, still St. Cloud gang. Yeah. Yeah, Tommy lives down by SeaWorld. He doesn't live in SeaWorld, he lives by SeaWorld. Oh, uh, my, my, my wife has instructed me I should say hello to my parents who are watching live stream. Mom, Dad, I don't know if you're watching right now because we are doing potluck, but come back so you can be part of the rest of them. What a crazy week. I woke up the other morning and my mom calls me and a tornado went through Palm Coast where they live. And God is good. Praise God. They had a tree down and some damage in the roof, but they're good. And there's a lot of damage all around, but we had no idea. Anybody get any damage from the tornadoes and rain that came through? No? Well, I don't want to talk too long. Just enjoy your dinner and make sure you get a chance to meet people and get a lot of food. And again, thank you so much for all the great food. Please keep eating. Is anybody in a rush to get out of here? No, right? Praise God. Because we're going to have a, a beautiful evening this evening. But I would like to kind of transition in a, a couple minutes here just to just share something I think the Lord has put on my heart. And then we'll have a time of um, worship and prayer. So... Just a couple of minutes. All right. Let's uh, just try to grab your seats if you don't mind. We're going to transition a little bit, to just a short time in God's Word. Thank you. Let's just pray. Turn our hearts and minds to the Lord. Oh, Father God, who are you that you are mindful of us? But Lord, your Word says that you love us and you know us. In our innermost parts, you know our innermost thoughts, Lord. Lord, we know you as Father. We know you as King. We know you as Provider. We know you as Protector. We know you as Holy. And we know you as Redeemer. And I'm thankful, Lord, for all the ways that we know you. And I'm thankful for all the divine attributes, Lord, that you have revealed to us. Lord, I just pray right now you help us just open our hearts and minds to your word and uh, your word will speak to us and, and heal us and give us hope. We pray this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Messiah. Amen. Well, originally tonight, the plan was to really just have a big Sukkot celebration. And I had uh, a teaching planned and God called an audible and that's okay. So uh, I'm going to ask you to bear with me because I'm not 100% sure this is fully baked in my, ma in my mind. A couple of months ago, uh, the company I work for is based up in, uh, near Philly, and it's an international company. And I was, we had a meeting, and there's a lot of people from France and London coming over now. And I met this gentleman. I'm not going to give his name. And um, really nice guy. He's Jewish. And um, we were at dinner together, and, you know, we're friends. He's my Jewish brother. His dad is Ashkenazi, and his mom's Sephardic, and he lives in the London area. We talked about Israel and the food, and 
you know, and, and um, we keep in touch via teams and, you know, Shabbat Shalom and, you know, Lashana Tova, things like that. And um, he pinged me the other day. Hey, Joel, how are you? You have any family and friends in Israel? I said, no, we don't. We have some people that we know, but, you know, as far as we know, they're okay. I said, how about you? And he said that uh, his cousin um, was near the kibbutz that got attacked and um, helped defend the kibbutz. Then he went to go fight and um, lost his life. But his other cousin, and, and her name is Mercedes, at the time when he pinged me, was missing. So I told him that we would pray. And I pinged him today just to wish him Shabbat Shalom and, and say, listen, we're going to pray for Mercedes tonight. And he said, well, they found her body. But he said, but at least she wasn't kidnapped. This is my Jewish brother. We're connected. You know, it's just like when you meet someone, you, I mean, don't want to, I don't know what to say. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't sure where to go in the, in, in, in the word of God, and the Lord brought me to Micah. I don't know why. <laughs> it's not the most pronounced book you're going to read, these minor prophets, all right? And the Lord brought me to Micah 4 a couple of weeks ago. And I felt this week the Lord brought me back to Micah. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to read Micah 4. If you have your Bible in front of you, you want to open up. I, read, uh, I use the NASB, but whatever translation you have, that's fine. And I pray this will all connect somehow for all of us. Actually, I never really realized how beautiful the book of Micah truly is until I started meditating on Micah. This is the peaceful latter days. <clears throat> and it will come about in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as a chief of the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and the peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob that he may teach us about his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For from Zion will go forth the law, even the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and he will judge between many peoples and render decisions for mighty distant nations. Then they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, and never again will they train for war. Each of them will sit under his vine and under the fig tree with no one to make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. Though all the peoples walk, each in the name of his God, as for us, we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. In that day, declares the Lord, I will assemble the lame and gather the outcasts, even those whom I have afflicted. I will make the lame a remnant and the outcast a strong nation, and the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on and forever. As for you, tower of the flock, hill of the daughter of Zion, to you it will come, even the former dominion will come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Now why do you cry out loudly? Is there no king among you, or has your counselor perished? That agony has gripped you like a woman in childbirth. Writhe and labor to give birth, daughter of Zion, like a woman in childbirth. For now you will go out of the city, dwell in the field, and go to Babylon. There you will be rescued. There the Lord will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. And now many nations have been assembled against you, who say, let her be polluted, and let our eyes gloat over Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord, and they do not understand his purpose. For he has gathered them like sheaves to the threshing floor. Arise and thresh, daughter of Zion. For your horn I will make iron, and your hoofs I will make bronze. You may pulverize many peoples. You may devote 
to the Lord their unjust gain and the wealth to the Lord of all the earth. I think we can safely say this is not the present situation in Israel, correct? And I think we can safely say this is not the present situation in our world today. Do we know what Micah 4 is? This is the prophecy of the Messianic kingdom. This is the thousand-year reign of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. It's, it's a hope. It's a Jewish hope, first and foremost. When you read constantly throughout scriptures, especially even in the, the New Covenant, they were expectant of the Messiah to come and start his kingdom, correct? But their hope wasn't based on truth, because Yeshua was right in front of them. This is a time that for those who believe in Yeshua, the Messiah, see, it's the Messianic kingdom, so it's the reign of the Messiah, right? So if you want to be a part of this Messianic kingdom, you have to first know who the Messiah is, right? And then you have to believe in that Messiah, so this is a hope, but for so many people, Jewish people, this will never become their reality because they don't know or believe who the Messiah is. I'd like you to turn to Matthew 16, 27 to 28, and then we're going to read into first, I think, um, first eight verses of 17. See, this first eight verses of 17 is about the transfiguration, and poor Peter. Peter gets, you know, you want to get away moments, right? You know, you know put it in, something like that. But there's a bit of a misconception about Peter, because Peter actually said the right thing just at the wrong time, but without the context of the end of 16, we miss it. So really, at the end of Matthew 16, after Yeshua, Jesus, is talking about discipleship, he says this, and Peter was one of the people that was there. For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and will then repay every man according to his deeds. Truly, I say to you, there are some of you, sorry, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Verse 28 is really important to truly understand Peter's response in verse 17. Six days later, Yeshua, Jesus, took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Peter said to Yeshua, Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tabernacles here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. And people think Peter is an idiot, but he's clearly not. You see, Peter had a messianic expectation. He knew who the Messiah was. He knew that the Messiah would come to fulfill what Micah wrote in Micah chapter 4. And without understanding what Yeshua Jesus said back in verse, chapter 16, verse 20, he says, or verse 27, for the Son of Man is going to come in glory. Put yourself in Peter's shoes for a second. If you saw Jesus, Yeshua, that you've been hanging around with for about two years, all of a sudden transfigured, would you not think that what Jesus just told you has come to fruition? Right? So Peter is thinking, yes, it's Sukkot. It's the Feast of Tabernacles. The Messianic kingdom is here, right? But it wasn't there yet because what Peter didn't understand was Yeshua had to die first. He didn't understand. None of the disciples understood the program of salvation, the first and second coming. 
In verse 5, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground and were terrified. And Yeshua, Jesus, came to them and touched them and said, Get up and do not be afraid. There's no way to put into words what's taking place. There isn't. And I really don't want to conjure up thoughts and whatnot. I think really what the Lord is trying to speak to me, and I hopefully this will come out, is we need to obviously pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters in every way, shape, and form for protection, for wisdom. And we know the Lord will fight their battles. It's his promise. We know as long as the sun and the moon exist, Israel will always exist. But we also need to pray for the salvation of his people. Because I don't think Mercedes was a believer in Yeshua, and she lost her life. See, for us believers in Yeshua, the Messianic kingdom is more than a hope. It's a reality. <laughs> this might be the first time in my life, truly, honestly, that I say, come, Lord Jesus, come. My wife and I have been very blessed. We have some beautiful things, but you know, it pales in comparison to what this Messianic kingdom is about. And we have to have our hearts set on Yeshua and say to our Jewish brothers and sisters, not just in Israel, but here, open your eyes and your heart to the truth of who Yeshua is. See, Peter eventually realized truly that Yeshua came to first die when he saw Yeshua on the cross. He thought everything was done, but then he saw his friend Jesus, Yeshua, resurrected and recommissioned, if you would, Peter, and encouraged them. And we know the courage and the boldness that Peter had. Our hope is not the world's hope. Because our hope is founded in the personhood of Jesus, of Yeshua. There are people out there right now who have no true hope. We must be ready to give them reasons for the hope that we have. It's a dark day right now for Israel. It's a dark day for this world. It's a darkness. Like you, it's been so tough to just focus on work. I was talking to another colleague this week, and I met her uh, a couple months ago. She's actually... Her family comes from Ukraine. Her grandmother just turned 94. We were having a conversation. She actually thanked me for bringing up the situation with my friend from London. And she said, Joel, she said, you know, I had this dream of taking my daughter to her homeland to go visit Ukraine. And actually, she's, um, she's Jewish as well. And she's like, my poor grandmother is losing both of her homelands. And we talked a little bit about it, and, and she says something, and she said, you know what, Joel? She was like, I'm trying not to pay attention to the news, but I have to pay attention. I say all this because it doesn't look good right now, but God is in control. And this messianic kingdom is a reality. There's some people here tonight that I don't know, so I'll just be really blunt. If I would say time was short. If Pastor Will was here, he'd say, we're out of time. You need to know who Messiah is. If you don't yet know who the Messiah is, I'm going to pray that you come to know who the Messiah is. If you're here tonight, and especially if you're Jewish, You know, Dr. Michael Rodelnik, some of you know that name. He always says something, always, I'll never forget, he said, he knew one thing. As a Jewish young man, he needed to know who the Messiah was. And he said, 
Whoever the scriptures revealed to me who the Messiah was going to be, I was going to believe that. And obviously the scriptures revealed the truth that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. I love that statement. Because if you're here tonight and you're Jewish and you don't believe in Yeshua, ask yourself, what is the scriptures telling you? And even if you're not Jewish and you don't know Yeshua, you don't know Jesus as your Savior, explore the scriptures. Pray with someone tonight because time is very, very short. God knows. God's time is God's time. But the most important thing, I think, and I hope this made sense to you because I'm not sure it made sense in my own mind right now, is that we know where we're going. Can you imagine what it's going to be like to live for a thousand years with Yeshua? Reigning, learning from him, his righteousness reigning. It's amazing. Hallelujah is right. Hallelujah. Right? Absolutely. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank, that's right. Because we're all going to be there one day. If you believe in Yeshua, we're going to be there. And all that's going on right now. And we know for Israel, if you know Bible prophecy, this is just maybe, who knows? It's only going to get worse. So let's just pray. Father God, first and foremost, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that we have a living hope, the hope that is an anchor for our soul, as it says in Hebrews. Lord, we mourn. We mourn for the loss of life. Lord, we're angry at the evil, the despicable, horrific things that we're seeing, Lord. Lord, Lord, we see what's truly in the hearts of men around the world, Lord. I should say man because it's in all over the place, Lord. The hatred that's spewing out right now against Israel. But Lord, you are the God of Israel. You're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord. But Lord, you are also our God. And you sent your son, Yeshua, to redeem us, not just the Jewish people, but all mankind. You've called all. You've given an invitation to all to come to you, Lord, to redeem us, to cleanse us, to lead us into righteousness, Lord. And one day, you're coming back. And there will be the fruition, the reality. It's not a fantasy. It's not a blind hope. It's reality. It's your word, Lord. I have no idea what it's really going to be like to be reigning with you, Yeshua, for a thousand years. But it sounds really awesome. But Lord, between now and then, I ask that you help us to stand. Stand for truth. Stand in prayer for our brothers and sisters. Stand against the bigotry and the anti-Semitism. Stand against this nonsense, Lord. Stand in prayer. Intercede. Lord, we just pray for wisdom for the leaders. We pray for strength and courage for the soldiers. But Lord, we also pray that you just mend the hearts of the people, Lord, who have lost loved ones. And Lord, this prayer, that the blinders would come off their eyes, the scales would fall off, and their ears would be open, and the eyes of their, heart would, their hearts would be open to the truth of what's in your word, that Yeshua came to save them, to redeem them, and he's coming back to save them. But Lord, they need to confess. They need to confess and believe in you, Yeshua, that you are the Son of God, the one true Messiah, the way, the truth, and the life. Father God, we just dedicate the rest of this time tonight just in worship and prayer, Lord, Lord, I pray that you move in our hearts, Lord, as we, as we sing some just beautiful songs. Lord, we pray that we honor you with our, with our words. I thank you for Daniel and Jeremy, Lord, as they're going to lead us in worship. Lord, I thank you for everybody here that you would just 
Your spirit would be here, Lord. Your shalom would be here. Your power would be here, Lord. So we commit the rest of this evening to you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray, amen. Before we start, Jeff, we'd like to come on up. Jeff contacted me earlier in the week, and I'm really glad he did. And Jeff is going to lead us in um, the mourners, Kaddish, the prayer for the lost who have lost their lives. He has a loud voice. He might not need a mic. <clears throat> Shabbat shalom. How are you all? Uh, I wrote a little something. Uh, I'm not much of a... I write a little bit sometimes and talk a little bit a lot of times. But this time, words cannot describe how we all feel right now. There are simply no terms in the dictionary to describe the depth of the pain and outrage and sadness that we feel. Uh, we lift up those that perished. That's the word I'm going to use, perished. I didn't want to use kills. I didn't want to lose head cut off. I didn't want to use bled to death. I want to use perished. Yeah. You know, there isn't any coincidence that these hostilities broke out before Sukkot and Simcha Torah. Uh, this Simcha Torah is the Lord's holiday where the Torah is read. But, uh, you know, what it's not telling you is that during this celebration, Christians come from all over the world to participate in parades in Jerusalem. They come from everywhere. Everywhere. There must have been four, five, six thousand that came. We don't hear about them. We don't know what happened to them. They got caught in the melee. Yeah, our brothers, our sisters. Those of us that are here tonight, those of us who have been here in the past, those of us that'll be, be here in the future, we're all God's people. We're all God's people. So, we pray for God's people. We pray for their healing. We pray for those that need to be healed. We pray for the injured and safe return of the hostages and the protection for all of the IDF brave soldiers. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Uh, This Kaddish is called the Mourner's Prayer. It's an Aramaic, sort of like Hebrew. It's sort of like Northern English and Southern English. It's a little different, but we understand it. Let us all rise, please. As we say, Yitkadal vi Yitkadal shamei rabba, amen. Ba'aba dibchirutei. Amen. Min kol berichita, tush bechata, v'nechamata, damiran ba'alma v'yimaru. Amen. Ose shalom b'mormav. Who ya ase shalom alenu? V'yakol Yisrael v'yimaru. Amen. 
magnified and sanctified be his name in the world, which he created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during the life of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and say, Amen. Amen. May he who makes peace in his high places make peace upon us and upon all Israel and say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting that, uh, you know, I keep hearing about community. I keep hearing about brotherhood. And it's something that I was talking with uh, Tom with earlier. You know, and that's something we need to think about, um, you know, how good and pleasing, how pleasant it is that uh, we dwell with each other, our brothers and sisters. And the community that we have together, it's, it's a blessing. And in these times when we're, you know, we don't know what to say, we don't, you know, we have, uh, you know, certain feelings about what uh, has happened. This is the time where we come together as a community. You know, it's the coat. So we can still celebrate the fact that we are no longer slaves because, you know, Yeshua came to save us and he came to free us. So, you know, we're going to spend some time in worship, um, maybe stop and pray. And there's some things that we can pray about, um, you know, but just think about those things. You know, um, we're not helpless. You know, we have somebody, we have a God who helps us. And, you know, we can draw upon that. We can think about that as we worship.
lifting holy hands in worship. We will not bow down to the gods of man. We will worship the God of Israel. You are holy. Shalom. I just wanted to share something really quick. I think it's more of a reminder. Oftentimes as believers, we find ourselves getting stuck in this tribalistic mindset where we tend to just stick in one of our 40,000 denominations and kind of look at ourselves as the ones who have this, you know, this truth or walking in this correct way and whatnot. And we tend to separate ourselves from the rest of the body of Messiah. And I really believe that that is one of the enemy's biggest deceptions on the body is to try to separate his people. 
because he knows that when the body comes together in praise, when the body comes together to fast, that things happen. And I just wanted to share Yeshua's prayer to the Father. He prays first for the disciples that were with him, and then he prays for the ones that would be coming into faith later. That's you and I. Interceding for all believers, John 17, verse 20 and on. I pray not on behalf of these only, but also for those who believe in me through their message, that they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. So also may, may they be one in us, so the world may believe that you sent me. The glory that you've given to me, I've given to them. And they may be one just as we are one, I and them, and you and me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them as you love me. Father, I also want those you've given me to be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory, the glory you gave me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world did not know you, but I knew you, and these knew that you sent me. I made your name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. I really believe that it's, it's time for God's people to stop looking at each other with you know, differences, eschatological differences and things like that. And, you know, one person, oh, that one's Baptist, this one's Presbyterian, this one's Messianic, this one believes that the rapture comes pre-trib, that one post-trib, that one, you know. I, I think that we get so caught up in all these nuances that they drive us apart. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants us to focus on these smaller things. These things are important. But these smaller things, because what's important is the gospel. It's the gospel that's being preached that has brought us into the sheepfold. And it's that same gospel that's going to bring both Jew and Gentile together finally all at once in God's kingdom. I just wanted to share that and just encourage everybody. Now we want to just join together at the table that we're with or pick three or four people to pray with and let's pray that even during these terrible times that the gospel message is still being shared. Let's pray for the missionaries who are in Israel at this time who are still the salt and the light that they're called to be and that the message is still being shared with the people who need to hear it. So let's pray for their protection and guidance for them and also for unity in the body of believers that we would unify and come together even that the silent churches even in our own nation would rise up and they will come together in solidarity solidarity with not only Israel but there are a lot of lost people who need salvation, Arabs and Jews and Gentiles and the nations of the world, which is what we were called to do, was to share the good news. So let's pray about that in small groups for the next five minutes, and then we'll go back into worship.
hurts into some They call him Yeshua He came to love Heal and forgive He bled and died To buy my pardon An empty grave is there to prove I say
comforter your holy spirit and lord we just we need you now as we intercede on behalf of our brothers and sisters lord your children those you love the apple of your eye father we're asking now for wisdom for leaders and decision makers god moving forward Father, that they would have godly wisdom and not the wisdom of men. Your word says that some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the Lord our God. Amen. And Lord, we know that you have a plan and a purpose. Though we may not understand, we may not see. We trust you. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for Yeshua. Abba, we also come to you, Lord. And as we partner up in prayer now, Lord, we just want to bring the IDF soldiers, Lord, to your throne. We want to bring them forward now, Lord, and just lift them up in prayer for protection, for their needs to be met, God, for wisdom and discernment on the battlefield. And Lord, for those leaders as well, God, as they're making decisions, and then just protection for Jewish people around the world, including in this country, Lord, for protection and peace, that anti-Semitism would not rise up, Lord, but that you, Lord, would be in control. And so now we'll partner in prayer and bring these things to you, God, because we know we can trust you. And we thank you, Lord, that you are a living God. You're not a God who's dead but you're alive, and we thank you, Lord. Amen. So let's partner up at our tables, and if we could bring the IDF soldiers um, to prayer for all of their needs, for their safety, and for our leadership in this country, of course, in Israel, and in other countries as well.
So our last time of prayer together tonight, let's pray for families who have lost loved ones, the hostages that they would be returned safely to their homes, for the children, the Holocaust survivors who are living through yet another time in their life, those who are injured, and those who need healing and comfort. For the mothers and the fathers. You can go ahead in your groups and just intercede on their behalf for healing and comfort.
something that very special we're not done yet I know this is a long night but uh, we don't normally go this long believe me but this is beautiful worship and prayer but Paul and Gina um, right back there are going to ask them to come on up because um, this is their last fellowship with us they're moving to Tennessee it's a blessing because how many family members are you moving up closer to now Wow. So um, we met Gina and Paul, I don't know how many months ago it was, and had a chance to get to know them. And, and um, they're newly married, actually. And um, Gina loves the Jewish people. And uh, we love her and Paul. And uh, we want to bless them on their journey to Tennessee. So if you want to come up here, we can pray for you if you want to stay back there, Paul. If you, <laughs> okay. I don't want to uh, embarrass them, but uh, when they came to Light of Israel, it was their first time together worshiping, correct? At a messianic fellowship. And they found us, and they came back. And again and again. Let's just stretch out your hands to Paul and Gina, and let's just pray. Father God. Who knows and understands your ways, Lord? We don't. Your word says that your thoughts are not our thoughts. Our ways are not your ways, Lord. But Lord, we understand the beauty. We understand, Lord, just the wonderful ways you work because we see them evident in our everyday lives, Lord. And after years and years apart, Lord, you brought Paul and Gina together into marriage. And, Lord, you brought them here to our fellowship. They have blessed us. Lord, they, have, they just love your people. Their hearts burn for you, Lord, first and foremost. Their hearts burn for their family, Lord. And I pray a blessing over them as they go to Tennessee to be around their grandchildren. Lord, that they would teach their grandchildren the truth of you, Lord Jesus. Lord, that you would give them abundant life joy, blessings, just pour your blessings on their entire family, Lord. Lord, we pray for safe journey, safe travels. Lord, you be their front guard, their rear guard. You surround them with your, your mercies, Lord. You just bless them and, 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 and favor them, Lord. Give them long life together, long years of marriage, Heavenly Father. They will see their grandchildren grow. 
to be young men and women serving you, Yeshua, the way they see their grandparents, the way they see Paul and Gina serving you. Lord, we thank you that they've blessed us. Lord, I thank you for their friendship. And even though they'll be all the way up in Tennessee, Lord, that, are, that we will see them again. And Lord, that, that you would just continue to work in their lives. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. And we pray this in the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, B'Shem Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Mr. Leibowitz. Hello. Come on up. <clears throat> what do you think about these rockin' rabbis up here, right? I mean, I told Jeremy a long time ago, uh, when he sings Kadosh, my heart melts. And this young man here has taken these songs. Mike, Earl Mike earlier in the week, sent me that text of... Uh, that song we just did, uh, Deber Alibi. And I said, Mike, we did that last month, and Daniel and these guys did it. And wasn't it beautiful the way they did it? Yes. Really was. We love you guys dearly. Um, where's Jeff? Come on up, Jeff. Jeff is going to bless us with the priestly blessing. And then we have one final song before we depart. Listen, and we sing hymns. And we pray different prayers. But uh, I've been Messianic for a while. And uh, two prayers. The Shema, we pray to the Lord. We dedicate ourselves. We show him love. We, we say, To love the Lord your God. We love him. It's our decoration of faith to him. And then at the end... We say the ironic benediction. The ironic benediction is when the Lord talks to us. He, he said, I have it in Hebrew, I'll even read it. It says, Yedaber Adonai el Moshe la Amor, diber el Aharon, ve'el banav la Amor ko tivachu et. But nay, Yisrael, say, Moses said, I mean, the God said to Moses, he said, speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, so shall you bless the children of Israel, saying to them, let us all rise. We are all children of Israel. Let us all rise. Bow your heads, please. Yivarecha Adonai Veyishmerecha Yair Adonai Panavalecha Vichunecha Yis Adonai Shalom. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Baruch B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach Ben Shalom. Blessed be the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Son and Prince of, Prince of Peace. Amen. And the blessing continues. The blessing continues. Hashem spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his son saying, So shall you bless them. Shemi et. Vashimu et shami el bnei Yisrael vaani aburuchem. And it says, "Let them place my name upon them, and I will bless them." And to that, and to that we say, 
Cain, you hear that song? Yes, may it be so. Baruch B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach and Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. kids have energy like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> Give me some of your energy. Thank you. Next fellowship, we're back on the schedule for the first Friday of November, which is November 3rd. It's not potluck. And then in December, we're going to go back to uh, first Friday in December. We'll once again have our latka potato pancake cooking competition. We love you guys. Thank you for sticking around a long time. If you want to stick around longer and help clean up, we would love that. And uh, let's not stop praying for Israel. Amen. Just because we're leaving to go home tonight, let's continue to intercede for all of Israel, for this whole world, until Yeshua returns. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh